Hi, it's Martin. Welcome to another video on my Knit365 YouTube channel. Today's video is something a bit different. It's not a monthly blog or a project blog. This is a behind the scenes special. I am currently at <laughs> Toft HQ. That's right. I have been incredibly lucky, fortunate, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm super, super excited that I'm here at Toft. Um, I've been chatting with Kerry and the team and asked if I could come and film some behind the scenes footage. Let's see what happens when orders come through, through to dispatch, through to how the team um, take their inspiration and crochet projects through to production and photography and everything in between and I'm just incredibly lucky that I'm here and I get to film all the behind the scenes and share it with you all so this blog I'm not sure how long it's going to be I don't know how much footage I'll end up taking but I hope that you enjoy this video um I'm <laughs> I can't believe I'm here <laughs> um it's just glorious this is the um the grounds of HQ um, it's a working farm, um, a working alpaca farm um, where the business is based. So there's the, the main Toft HQ building. And I know just behind me through the trees, that's the dispatch building. I say I know, I believe that. I think that's what I've seen on Instagram. I think that's dispatch. But more will be revealed in a bit. Um, yeah, I've got a list of things as a super fan that I want to see. Um, so I'm hoping that I can take you along with me. I've got my tripod. Um, it is Tuesday the 7th of June and I need to be here for 9.30 to join the morning meeting. So it's about 9.15, I've just arrived. Oh, and yeah, um, I'm gonna go into HQ and go meet the team. And then um, I hope that you really enjoy this video um, and I'll be back at various points to chat to you, I guess, and, um, and then we'll do a wrap up at the end. So let's head in. and I'm creative head of visual design here at Toft. Um, so I basically take the team's ideas and I turn them into um, visual things like logos, branding, yep. um, all the printed merchandise you see, um, and I order the pin badges, the patches, all sorts of stuff. So I do loads of things. Patches, we'll, um, we'll be back on patches later. <laughs> and what are we doing now? Uh, so we're going to make you a sticker to join the dispatch team. I'm having stickers for dispatch. Yeah. Uh, now, do you have a preferred animal? Can I have Peter Bear, please? Peter. Peter the bird. Right. Uh, yes, I can. I'm just going to find him in the images. And he's bird. Peter. Oh, um, Peter the bear. Oh, Peter the bear. Sorry. That's okay. He's Peter the bear. Do you mean Penelope the bear? This one? Oh, no. Oh, uh, oh Piot. Polar bear. Polar that's bear. the one. Sorry, there are so many bears. Oh, no, no, go back. We'll, we'll have Penelope. Are you sure? Yeah, my Peter, my, my, it's fine. My Peter's brown. <laughs> oh, lovely. Perfect. Then. Yeah, look at this. that. Look how cute she Where is her foothold? Okay, so I'm just going Perfect. Yeah. There you go. Right. Go on, 
Walk him out. I was just getting ready to go to dispatch and Kerry's had a phone call. What's happened? We've just had a birth. Within the last, well, we think the last five minutes, it's just hit the ground, so fresh. So we are going to see a little Kriya, a little baby alpaca. No, sorry. <laughs> I've learned that lesson the hard way. I bet. We've had 16 Kriya so far this year. Let's go and see what we've got. Thank you. They tend to get when the weather is good, they're actually sensible like that, <laughs> not like sheep. So that's why when I saw the forecast this morning of 20 degrees, I was like, oh, Martin literally couldn't have timed this better. Had it been rainy, he would have been struggling. Yeah. That's good that they know. Yeah, it is. I think in South America, it's very hot in the daytime and then sub-zero at night. So actually it's for the survival of the Korea that, that they tend to be born when it's good weather. Yeah. It looks like it's already on its feet. So look, they, they stand like straight away. That's the bit that's astounding. Yeah. This looks like it's survival. Here. This is wobbly one. Yeah. Morning, Jack. Morning. It's that literally there. Yeah. You can see the little wobbly. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. This is Martin, Martin Jack. Hi. Hi. So Jack's the herdsman that looks after the whole of the herd. And we've had 16, so 17 births with this one, yeah? But all of these are due to give birth. I mean, you can see, look how pregnant she is. She looks massive her, doesn't she? 326, yeah. It's hanging really low. Yeah. But everyone that doesn't have a Korea is due to have a Korea within the next couple of weeks. How long are they pregnant for? 11 and a half months. Wow. And they only really have one. Twins is a chance of one in 50,000. So we've never seen twins here. <laughs> that's a very big Korea that's just been born. <laughs> I'm amazed it's still up with the <laughs> yeah. It's not even dried up though. No. It's still damp. And so generally speaking, we don't have to interfere at all. It's not like lambing that you will do exactly what we've just done is Jack will have driven past, not even realised she was in labour. Yeah. And you've got a new one running around when you come down. The complications only tend to happen when my parents decide to go on holiday. <laughs> so I, Jack and I, last week before last, we had to um, help one out that had its legs twisted and its head the other side. So I had to go in and help deliver that one. Hello. Right, I am back from seeing the Korea being born. Super cute, very long legs apparently. Um, and I'm now here with... Karen. And what do you do, Karen? I work in dispatch. So we're just printing some orders now. Gonna go I've got my stickers. <laughs> we're gonna go dispatch and we're gonna go and pick some orders. We are in dispatch and I'll film some more of it later. It's huge. Right, we are going to pick our orders. I say we, Karen's gonna pick an order. Hello. Hello. And I'm going to help. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, I packed my orders and I probably wasn't the quickest. Karen was very patient, um, but there will be some orders that have got Martin stickers on them. It's exciting if you get one of those, let me know. Um, right, we are now doing dye club packing. So there's lots of busy people packing up your dye club. And I am mm, stuck on the tripod. I'm allowed to show you this, Kerry said. Dun, 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 dun. I nearly dropped it. So this is Dye Club and this is gonna be a Terrapin. It's exciting. So we are packing. Oh no, we're, we're wrapping, is that right? Wrapping. Wrapping to pack them. Wrapping to then pack them. And we're doing both today. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the plan. If we get to packing after wrapping, I get to use more of my stickers. <laughs> Right, let's go. Okay, we finished doing hand dye and Evie said, down the end, Evie wave. <laughs> You'll meet Evie later. I'll do a proper talk. Evie said I could put my stickers on the hand dye. So these here have got my little stickers on. So if you are in hand dye club, dye club, dye club, and you get one of those stickers, I did it. Um, but also, can we just say, Karen has wrapped a lot more than me. My productivity, I don't think I'm going to get invited back. I think it's lunchtime now. Is it lunchtime now? Yay! Look how big this room is. Right, I am here now with Kerry. Hi. <laughs> so, tell us what you were just telling me. Where are we? So we are in the room that was formerly our dispatch. So until um, about a month ago, this is where we shipped thousands of parcels from this small room. And what we discovered we needed during COVID was not only a bigger dispatch department, but actually somewhere that I can do all of the videos. So this is now a permanent setup for me to be able to do all your time lapses of your step-by-steps, as well as the actual going live place, um, doing far more Zoom. Um, so that when I'm actually teaching virtual workshops, I can do it all from here now. And we have really fast internet in here and the light is lovely. So it was the perfect place to set up a photography studio. You're now watching me filming Kerry, filming a time-lapse video that will probably be live before this video goes live. So now you can see the behind the scenes. Amazing. We had other project, other videos in plan, have we? Yeah, absolutely. This is where I spend. Uh, this is where I spend ninety percent of my time now. Is at this table. I think I need to invest in a comfy chair. Yeah. I hadn't intended to spend. I used to do this on the sofa. So yeah, next up, I've got actually that, that video is done. So next up, I've got. Well, this is just me casually cruising and um, seed and flowers in between <laughs> as I do. And I've actually got a blue tip to sew up next. Um, on time lapse, the big one and the small one. Wow. Louise the Terrapin. So I'm just going to add on another set of toenails to this second foot. So when you're using your hand dye yarn, you won't be using a contrast for your nails, you just carry on with your same yarn. But I'm working this in two colours here, so I've opted to do the toenails in the stone. So put your hook through like that through the stitch, slip stitch into position, then chain, and turning, work back down that chain. Then after you've completed that final stitch, move across the foot, go into another one like that. So put your hook in through the foot and slip stitch again before you set off on another chain. And 
and repeat until you've got your five toenails in position. The hardest bit for me too is not showing the pattern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's the hardest bit is not verbally speaking the pattern out loud because actually then everyone has the pattern rather than it yeah. being separate. So it's such a, a crazy balance between showing the techniques really thoroughly but not actually explicitly giving the whole detail of the pattern. Yeah. And, it's, and I, re I really worry about that when I'm talking about things I've made. Oh, I've chained. Yeah, I know. It's a hard, number of it? stitches. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a balance. Like, I don't, sometimes I don't think there's any problem with showing the whole pattern, um, but it would be a soul destroying thing if you were signed up to, to a club. And you didn't need to be signed up to the yeah. club because the whole pattern was available. Yeah. So we're still here in Kerry's TV studio uh, slash now storage room. And this is um, something that I think you're all going to want to see. So it was one of my questions that I had. So these boxes behind me, this is where... <laughs> all the creations are stored. So I'm gonna flip you around and then we can have a rifle through the boxes. So all these bookshelves, <laughs> that's a lot of creations. So we've got some of the giant, these giant Rebecca Till is just amazing. Topical at the moment, a couple of the dinos, and obviously Her Majesty. But let's have a look, what have we got? So primates this is where carrie's still here um but this is where i'm going to show my lack of menagerie knowledge to be able to name all of the uh we'll play this game now we'll randomly pick from boxes <laughs> so we've got primates box uh where do we go next birds Oh, this is one of my favourites. Yeah, one of my absolute favourites too. We love the McCall. I've made, I've made my partridge. <laughs> I'm currently behind plan, but I'm going to catch up this month. But I've made my partridge. That's Brian. This is the last. <laughs> one of my actual personal favourites too. <laughs> yeah. So literally... Box and box. Boxes and boxes of birds. So many creations. What have we got next? Level one. Ah, so these are now by technique. Oh, there's a few in here. Ah, no, these are from the original menagerie, I think. Are they? Who's that one? That's Libby the Wombat in the new collection. Uh huh. We all know him. Yes, well, the original Seamus the Alpaca. In fact, you know what you could see as a top secret? I have actually got the original, original Seamus the Alpaca here. Oh! It's <laughs> <laughs> not my finest crochet, but he lives here. This is the actual original Seamus. Um, so he is made in a really early batch of Toft Alpaca yarn. Wow. He's 10 years old. He has been loved by my children and then come back in as they've finally rejected him. But you <laughs> see, um, yeah, that is a proper actual original. So it would have been probably one of the first 10 things that I ever crocheted. Wow. Yeah. Seamus. Awesome. Yeah. Love him. Oh, let's do this one. Level three. My fa It's one of my favourite techniques. And I'm not just saying this because Carrie's here. Loop stitch. <laughs> I love a loop stitch. I've got a morag. I loved doing morag. I've still got my giant morag head to make. <laughs> no, it's still in a box in the spare room. <laughs> uh, you could have brought it with you and uh, we could have all applied our hooks to it to get it. Oh, that would have been, don't, would have been a good plan. that would have been a really good plan. I don't think I know this one. Um, so that is Paige, the um, pink fairy armadillo. Ah. And she was the one that um, well, was towards the end of the original Ed Animals book. Oh, okay. Hmm. 
the original Walter. Now, this one is half sewn. Was this a demo model? That is an Aaron Nancy the Beat. Most likely <laughs> came on creating crafts with me, and got half made, and then is yet to make it back onto this table. And what Beth tends to do now is line those up for me by this table, and I'll eventually get around to finishing them. Poor Nancy has yes. no legs. Aaron Nancy, there must be another one somewhere, but that must be the second one that you can make from the kit. There must be a complete one somewhere. There, there you go. Seamless, she was one I made earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're in the non standard form box there. Yep. There's probably some goodies in there. Couple of Atticuses. Was that Die Club Frog? Yeah, so that's one in the manual, um, originally done in the yellow and the um, with the red spots on as a hand dye. One of my favourites, I really like the frogs actually, I find the shapes really, really pleasing. Yeah, the legs are brilliant, the way they fold over. <sighs> oh, there you go. There we go. And when you head back into the office, all of the hand dye ones are on one shelf. Uh huh. Oh, I saw yeah, those with the with the dolls. Yes. Yeah. Some of them get stored slightly separately. I haven't videoed that yet, but I've got that's on my list. It's like a who's who of toft in this. I literally could just spend hours. I think. <laughs> that's the ten rep. He was one. Um, he was on the train crash show when Lionel first came. So that's a proper COVID memory to me because that'll be one that I probably made just a few weeks before we went into full lockdown. Wow. Yeah. And that's Bonnie, which is- A classic. Is a, actually a um, John Lewis exclusive. Yeah. yeah, I love her here. Shall I stay away from this one? <laughs> I won't open these ones just in case. These ones would be all fine. You can see it, whether or not, yeah, see, the thing is, it's the new colour. I'm, I'm, I'm looking away, so it's fine. I won't. I... <laughs> you can have a little, we can do a few little sneak through here. Yeah. 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 We've got a lily, one of my favourites, and one that actually we're working really hard at the moment to make in lots and lots of different colours. Amazing. Um, because lilies, well, actually, my yellow ones have just come up in the garden. And then a couple that you've probably had a little sneak peek of, the ranunculus, which I think is such a little cutie with a hood on. Um, and they're a really lovely flower that have got all the different layers around them. Amazing. Um, I'm on the dinos now, so you can rifle if you need to. <laughs> and a bit of a bluebell. There you go. There's a, a little of a... So that's the that's blue bell there too, which is, so a lot of these new flowers, um, th there's a lot more variance in the flowers, I think is the truth, than any other book that I've ever done. So there's yeah. lots of different techniques in terms of shape, in terms of stitches, in terms of construction. Uh, and there will be a video for each one. <laughs> so <laughs> don't worry, <laughs> I've, I've recorded this time as I've gone along, so there'll be lots of different videos. There we go. Only Beth truly understands the system, I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> I often look and then I, I have to get Beth to help me find what I'm looking for. We haven't met Beth yet. Not on camera. <laughs> yeah. Right. And the final one over here. Monsters. Booties. I've got booty pattern and I've not actually got around to making them for the nieces and the nephew yet. But they're just the cutest. I think I actually have this one to make a unicorn for Adriana and Thea. The cutest little zebra. And it's too early to be thinking about Christmas yet, but of course we have to pull. Glitzy Mrs. Claus. And Nutcracker. Nutcracker's on my list to make this year, and after I made my mini corgi, I'm gonna try and make a mini nutcracker this year. Using fine. One of the wise men looking a bit raggedy.
there we go. Right, <laughs> I could literally be here all day. So many <laughs> amazing things in this room. It's like a treasure trip, like a museum. A couple of giant heads up there. Um, we're coming in here this afternoon, Dye Studio. Uh, most of the folks are on lunch, so we're gonna catch up with Jess in a bit and do some dyeing, I think. Okay, right, I am here. Who am I with? Hi, I'm Tash. And I'm Emma. Yay! <laughs> yeah. And? Emma the Bunny. Emma the Bunny, I bought my patches. I'm gonna get them to sign them. <laughs> Excited. Right, what are we doing? Ooh, um, crochet. <laughs> Oh, we're just going to sit and not just sit and crochet, it's the creative bit. Yes. Yeah? yeah what are we yeah. crocheting? So we are doing um, a new piece for Create and Craft. So yeah. What is it? Can we see? Yeah. Do you want to see? Yeah. So this is our head elf. Oh, I love him. <laughs> and then at the moment, we are doing his hat. Amazing. I think you're going to help me do some limbs. Yeah, so if I can. Want, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, and then we'll get the bells. We'll go and get some bells as well. So we've got a few set bells. Awesome. <laughs> going to be a problem. Emma, are you helping? I am working on the next magazine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I am um, working on new fabric, crochet fabrics. Yeah. Um, so I would be given a stitch and I need to make it work in toft yarn, which this morning has meant getting larger and larger and larger on the Lots crochet. Lots of hook. experimenting. Um, and experimenting. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. And then I keep presenting it to the team and when they're happy, I will go away and make it. Yeah. For photography. So we probably won't get to see what Emma's working on. <laughs> that will be one secret too far. Um, yeah, it's not going to be the same colour palette that we had last time where we had loads. This is going to be a lot more stripped back. Yeah, yeah, a lot more stripped back, definitely. Down 22, yeah. 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 Interesting. Right, okay, I'm going to put you down because we're going to do some crocheting and I'll film a bit now. hour has gone and I've made an arm for head elf <laughs> we're crocheting Christmas in June he's gonna be fun in the red what did we say he was purple when he came out yes the amethyst um, when he came out but now we've got the ruby arrow <laughs> so cute so I've done this and Tash, chief maker, has compared my tension mm -hmm. and I passed. Perfect. So I can look out for him, can't I? Yes. Online, yeah. online at some point, I'm like, I made that <laughs> arm. 
Right, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Let me bother you. I'm going to go and bother someone else now. <laughs> so, as the day carries on, it is half past two. Um, I've just come outside. Look how glorious. Um, I actually bought all of my patches with me um, so that I can get them signed if the staff member is here. And um, Evie works a morning shift started in dispatch, obviously. So I'm going to go and see Evie because I think she finishes work at three o'clock. So it's about half past two. So I'm going to go and try and catch her and then say hi to the dispatch team again because I had a good bit of fun and time with them this morning. So let's head off to dispatch again but i'll take you on the trip now And this <laughs> is Dispatch. This is the new barn that was built, I think during lockdown. Look at that. So that's where we're going. That's where the guys are. But all this is storage, forklift truck, cardboard boxes, all this, I'll show you this in a bit, all this top layer is all wool which is just crazy so let's go and find evie say hello we're making kits for john lewis who, we... ah, 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 who, who, who are you where'd you come from we're, we're, oh we're doing <laughs> i'm evie the this? shower <laughs> yes um what else do you want me to say i'm sorry i put you on the spot yeah, now you have sorry <laughs> Right, we're making kits. Yes. I'm going to put hooks in the kits. All the hooks. Uh, and I bought, I, I bought my pen. Evie's going to sign my patch. Oh my gosh, where do you want me to sign it? Whenever you want to sign it. Oh no. <laughs> the pressure. <gasps> <laughs> what do you do at the show? Here's my patch. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do at the show? <laughs> right, while Evie does that, I'm going to make some kits. Right, we're going to do, going to show you the production line. The team are making Emma Bunnies mini kits so we're going to show you how it all links together so harriet is doing boxes and then they go over to karen who's doing pattern cards and stuffing mm -hmm. weighed out by hand and then i'm meant to be putting needles hooks needles and get a minute in my crochet mixed up hooks <laughs> into boxes which I can't do one-handed. And then they're gonna go down to Evie to do eyes, and then on to Emma. Needles. Seamless. Like a well old machine. I'm holding production up now. <laughs> Evie's waiting for boxes. I need to go. Right. We made some kits. I've caused a commotion in dispatch by holding up the process. So I'm leaving them to get back up to normal speed. <laughs> Um, I'm now going to find Jess, who I think is hand dyeing for um, the Lupin for the Kew Garden special, um, which I'm allowed to show you because the colourway has been put online. So that's not a spoiler. Um, so there was Dispatch, the building. So I'm just walking back. So I'm going into that building there. So that part of the building, I won't walk across the grass. It's just been mown. Mown? Mowed. So I'm gonna go find Jess and then see if we can do some dyeing or I can help with the dyeing. Right, I'm here in the dye room with... Hiya, I'm Jess. I'm just dyeing our new hand dye for Q Gardens. Um, it's a Lupin. Is this so the finished one? Yeah. Can I show this? Yeah. Da, 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 da. This isn't a spoiler because this has been on Toft's yes, socials. On so you can see this colour. This isn't, I'm not giving anything away. 
So we're going to hand dye it. I say we, Jess is yeah. going to hand dye it because I'm wearing... I'll just wearing... take you through the process of the hand dyeing. And I'm wearing white. <laughs> yeah, you can step back. So I just start off, we've sectioned off the um, sections that we want to dye. So this middle bit's going to be orange and then yellow and then pink. So we're doing them quite precisely because the um, pattern requires the skein to be, yeah, precise. Mm -hmm. So we'll start off with the orange. And we just have to work it in, in between the lines. Like so. Gonna be and crazy careful. that that's orange, but that doesn't actually look orange. Yeah, so <laughs> sometimes when the dyes, um, when the dyes are put down on the on the skein, they look very different to when they actually come out. Yeah. It's quite different to um, yeah, quite difficult to see how it will come out in the end. But just experimenting and stuff will gets us to the final product. So then, so that's our first colour, and then we do the yellow. So I'm having to like wipe my hands in between just to make sure I don't transfer any onto the next colour. And we just have them in these bottles so they're easy to easy to spread on the skein. Yeah. Like so. And we just have to make sure we fully saturate it just to get every last bit. And then like white bits down and stuff. <laughs> like so. And then we just blend them in the middle where they meet. And it is quite um, quite time consuming, <laughs> so <laughs> just have to take take extra care when we're doing it. And then I just wipe the little bits that could maybe go into the other sections. And then this bit where it, where it gets precise, we just work up the dies to the line yeah. that we've set out. And do the other side. And lots of experimenting, I guess. Then. Yeah. So I did experimenting. We do experimenting with the colours. And then also with the composition. So how the skein is laid out really determines how um, the final product looks. Yeah. So once it was uh, once it's all been crocheted up, um, yeah, it can either be spotty or stripy, or yeah, speckled. So. <laughs> and this it's is all for different. Q. Yes, this so, is the Kew Gardens. And so when did you settle on the final? I guess when when did you start experimenting for Q? And when did you settle? So how long does it take? So from from my initial um, conception, I guess, um, usually takes me a few days to just figure out um, the colours and stuff, maybe a day or, or two days, and then we usually move on to the composition. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't take too long because we've already got the colours and it's just laying it out on the skein just to see what looks good. And then um, we wait for the skein to dry and then... Um, yeah, then do a bit of crochet with it yeah and then see if we're happy um so yeah with this one it'll probably take a little bit more time to work out how we want to um have it with the pattern yeah because like i said it will be it will um work up according to the according to where it is on the skin yeah i'm allowed to see the colors but i'm not allowed to see the pattern no no <laughs> well you, pattern... will, you will be seeing the pattern I haven't seen the pattern yet. Oh. I haven't seen it, so <laughs> I can't. I can't confirm. We're under wraps. Yeah, <laughs> top secret. Not even I've seen it. So, um, yeah. There we go. And then once we're done here, we usually flip it, and it looks quite different on the other side. So it looks really neat on this side. So then we have to do the same again yeah. on the other side, like so. And so they're always done in twos as well. So yeah. it's really. It's proper hand dye, it's it's literally done person it's scheme by scheme. Yeah, so it's done all by hand. Um sometimes we do it in threes as well, like the previous the dye club has been done in threes. Um but this one's been done in twos just because we want it to be quite precise. Yeah. And um yeah, just because and we also only have to do ninety. Whereas for dye club we're doing like seven hundred, eight hundred, <laughs> so um, just being able to do it that bit quicker is yeah. definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, it's going to blend this in as well. So yeah, each one. Amazing. Is going to vary specifically. The okay. colours are so vibrant. Yeah, I really enjoy these colours. I think they go really well together, and it's nice that they can. It's forgiving because you can have them blending into each other as well. So as much as we don't want them to 
fully um, merge into each other. A bit of yeah. blending is definitely nice to have. There we go. And that's it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so that's how we do it. And then we wrap it up and we put, pop it in the microwave. And then it gets baked. It's all done. Yeah, and then it gets heated up to the right temperature. So when it's hot enough, and then we take it out. And then, yeah, and then we rinse it and dry it, and that's it. <laughs> and then it becomes yeah. this. <laughs> Let me come on this way because actually the light's much better. Mm -hmm. And then we get the finished skeins. Yeah, it's just so satisfying to see them all, all finished. Yeah. It's definitely very rewarding. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and I got my patch signed. The most important thing. <gasps> Hello. Hello, who are you? Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> Office dog. Oh, I did get <gasps> What are you doing? I should explain now, shouldn't I, that this is Liz's dog. Yeah. What's his name? Jay. Jay. Does Jay come to work every day? Yeah. <gasps> what are you doing? Hello. Every dog needs a workplace, quite frankly. <laughs> you think they'll be coming out five next week? Right, those of you that follow Toft on Instagram may remember the baby running ducks. I'm going to find the baby running ducks, but I've been warned they're not so baby. We're gonna go find them. Hello! <laughs> they are definitely not babies. Oh, bless them. So, this is a boy with the pom pom on the back of his head. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The girls. And we will confess we did a naughty thing and we did help the last egg out. Um, and actually, it is the one that's being bullied by the others. So, it's okay, We're, it's not too bad. But I think we did that thing that you're not supposed to do where we did help the last one get out of the egg. Oh. But it has been picked on by the other He needs a helping hand. Yeah. Oh, look at him. And then I'll go outside next week then just so. But they will. So basically, basically, we put the others in already to become, to get another set. And they've got a house that's empty because unfortunately the fox did get our <gasps> last set of runner ducks in the wind going into the winter of last year so we've waited and then they've got a pen ready to go out and ultimately they will free range around so once they've learned where they're at yeah. they'll just walk around top amazing it's so funny the way they stand up straight yeah, yeah. literally runner ducks <laughs> But also, like, to get a male and the rest female is incredible. Yeah. Because that is what you want. Hmm. So it means that they can live quite happily and we don't have to find a home for the male, which is what we were, like, we, that's what we were worried about, is that we'd have to try and find homes for, like, the extra males. So we'll see what we get again next time. Here we go. Awesome. Right. I'm back with Kerry. Hi. We are going to see all of the yarn in the storage. I think I pointed out earlier all of that we're going let's go right we are upstairs in the barn and literally look at all the wall floor to ceiling and then carrie you're telling me so we go this it's almost like a one-way system it is so the yarn comes up when it comes in delivery and the forklift lifts it up onto this um top floor the mezzanine floor and then there is a system um very much <laughs> adhered to by the rest of the team where the yarn moves in one direction forwards it gets labeled because we label all the yarn in house by hand so it comes in without labels attached and then the team um, add those labels on as a final check as well so it means we've handled every single ball as a team before it goes out so it gets labeled here and it goes in a one-way system down and out into our dispatch department that's a lot of wool folks And people will will recognise the balling square things. We've seen on Instagram, haven't we? Absolutely. All so, the balls come in and they all get labelled. So a whole box is tipped out into effectively a sandpit. Um, and then 
because it's important to have the batch number on every single batch of yarn, all the yarn labels are like that, and they'll all go on by hand. So these are made by hand by team members and then added to the balls. So there's all the labels. <laughs> this is the bit that blows my mind is seeing all of the wool. The amount of work that goes on to the, yeah. the yarn. Before it even gets put into a box to go out as a kit or a parcel, yeah. it's been handled by so many people because even at the mill where it's manufactured, again, it's not automated. As much as it is a really high tech um, mill, actually those balls of yarn have already been handled by probably 20 people mm. before they get here and then there's probably a good five people yeah. before it gets into the parcel on its way yeah it's crazy how long you might not be able to put a figure on it how long or how often does it rotate so a, bo a box down the end how long would it take for that to get all so the way through to get into this it would batch? entirely depend on time of year and on the colour. Um, so some colours are really, really rapid moving, um, especially, say, for example, ruby. Mm -hmm. So at Christmas time, a ball of ruby, if it arrives in September, will definitely, a whole batch will be gone right out of the building before we get to the new year. Yeah. So ruby rapidly moves, but only usually at that time of year, not in the summer. Yeah. Um, in stark contrast, our slowest moving yarn is cocoa. And actually, okay. cocoa moves so slowly that I have a feeling the batch that we're on might even be 18 months old wow but during covid um we had no yarn <laughs> at all so we really almost ran out of yarn that this space was um the only reason we could keep going is because with the amount of space we had is because we also had no yarn yeah um so actually all the yarn that you see that we're handling is all fresh back fresh batches in because we almost went to zero and then had wow. to build back up again it's just phenomenal but again i was we've seen earlier the the new dispatch and the new bar it's how all this existed before you built this yeah so we had yarn swirled everywhere here on site so for anyone that does remember the shop and um, we had a holiday let at one point as well obviously um i do live on site so my house is here as well we had stock swirled everywhere <laughs> attics um right the way across the place to try and keep moving um, if there was a space there was a box in yes it. there was and so it's lovely to actually have it in one place and we started building in november and we've only just moved in in the last month wow there we go folks we are going to label some yarn <laughs> Kerry's found a box here. Box of lime. A box of lime that's much needed, apparently. So and we've got a bag. We need to do this for tomorrow to get the guys started. So. So we tip all the balls out first. And what you're looking for when you're handling them is external knots. So um, much as actually the industry standard would be in a pure wool yarn that you can expect up to three knots in 100 grams. Yeah. We would never ship a ball of yarn that has an external knot that we can visibly see on the outside. So we're also checking for removing any external knots. Then as you feel them, the only other thing you're really looking for is um, sometimes the machine goes twice round. So to make a 25 gram ball, it actually, again, it's really manual. They all get spun at the same time and you'll see 12, 25 gram balls along, mm -hmm. but occasionally 11 get removed and one stays on. Right. So you do get a 50 gram ball <laughs> every now and again, uh, which you'll feel, which is a nice little bonus. And we tend to extract that and I'll use that for making. Right. So what you'd normally do is pop the labels on top and then position the box where both of us can easily throw into it. Yeah, we can do it here. Um, so I think that'll be the best tool oh. before, the height. Um, and then the team will stand either side of the table you um so these these are made by tying a length into a knot so you put it straight through the middle you then divide that and you put that through before you pop it into the box and believe me i'm not the fastest of these if there was a toft olympics uh, this would be <laughs> one of them and i think we should probably time how long it would take and every right. box of 25 has 300 balls in so it's 300 small balls right we're going to yeah. do this I wanted to see Kerry's desk, but Kerry doesn't really have a desk in the main office. 
because uh, apparently it doesn't sit still long enough to have one. <laughs> so we've come back to the film studio, which is really... Because this really is my desk. And what I was going to get is, um, what I would always have on my desk is mm, the latest seeds that I'm buying <laughs> from, a, from a seed catalogue to make sure I've got all the uh, correct flowers in the correct colour planted yep. in my garden. Um, usually a project, as you can see here, this is how, um, so Tash reuse, carefully reuses all of these bags. <laughs> this is where Tash has made me a remake of a pattern we already have, but in a different colour. So this is a blue bird that I've got in there. Yeah. They'll be the things that I'm sewing up tomorrow. I'll usually have something half made, um, which, uh, I will get round to finishing where I've done half a video. That's my ends for the week. Wow. Plus... <laughs> Plus the turquoise um, that I tangled myself up in that I probably will retrieve from out of there. So that's my ends for the week. And then a sketchbook. And actually Beth just told me that she'd got it up. So you can take a bit of a look. Um, I'm going to turn you back. It's things covered in Sharpies. So there'll be me reading patterns. Reading the end of the patterns. There'll probably be a bit of an Instagram live script. <laughs> Half a pattern there. So... A little, little bit of a look at how things start. So that's a foxglove um, that I was, was working on there. Yeah. So the, this, I guess, is the reality of what my desk looks like. Is actually a lot of drawings with little fragments of patterns on that then go forward to being turned into the patterns that you see. The choices wow. on the colours. Yeah, lots of different um, bits and pieces. So that one that we just... There was, one, there, there was one with notes. This one. Yeah. So you would have drawn out... Yeah, so I'll go for that one as a good example, actually. Yeah. Um, and just to clarify with everyone, that one isn't in the book. Um, <laughs> so in order to get down to 30 patterns, um, I actually probably had over 65 sketched out um, wow. sitting there. So, yeah, with the jasmine, it would be a general concept that's drawn out and then probably lots of testing, um, a few handwritten notes while I worked that out to begin with. Yeah. And then the, if this was one that was going to go through to production, what would normally happen would be I would formally write this in like obviously digitally on something it would be tested and made by one person if it was going to be an add-on like a flower yeah um and then it would go through testing and production so tash might make me if i i, I think this probably needed about 30 rather than three <laughs> um tash would make all of those and they'd come back in for um stuffing and sewing up on camera wow um so yeah that's ja uh, jasmine which is a really beautiful um, and roughly because i know you can rush a design through and you can yeah. get things done quickly but normal process from you doing the sketch to if this was if this was going to be a new kit for example so book, yeah book production's even slower so book production is at least two years from first sketch through to yeah. actual release now so it's a really slow process which, which i'm not used to and the team's not used to we actually all really enjoy the excitement of having an idea and taking it through to production so yeah. yeah about two years for a book one wow standard top kit we're working three months ahead minimum um but actually from sketch it's probably longer than that so obviously if you think about the, what we're doing for christmas i know what all of that is mm -hmm. it's sketched some of it's made um so yeah <laughs> It is a, it's why I get confused nowadays when I sign the dates on things because I'm like, which one are we in? Because I've actually signed contracts for 2024 and 2025. Wow. <laughs> so I'm having to keep my head so far in the future yeah. and then make sure that we have the right colours in the right quantities to bring that through. Yeah. So what we tend to do is put in, at the beginning of the year, we put in a proper 12-month plan and try and get ourselves 12 to 18 months ahead but then if ideas come to the table, we'll try and turn them around as quick as possible. So actually, in truth, the mini corgi that you've just done for the Jubilee weekend, yeah. that wasn't supposed to be in the plan <laughs> at all. But as we approached Jubilee weekend, everyone was making their queens. We suddenly wanted to enjoy that too and have something to share. So we suddenly turned, um, all the accessories were there, but the mini corgi got turned around probably within 10 days. Wow. Um, to, to the pictures that you see. Yeah. So it does still vary because that's what we love as well is the yeah. excitement of idea through to, through to it being on the shelf. I've loved seeing everything, but I think I do think this is my favourite room. <laughs> Being able to just come in and see. And see who else is in there. It's a box of birds. We did birds earlier. Yeah. It's amazing to see all the... And, and you were saying, I didn't spin this around. There's more. There is. And we've only just, moved, we've only just moved in here. So, <laughs> like, we really haven't finished cataloguing. This will be the kind of exciting creative hub. These are the giant ones that don't <gasps> fit in, in the other boxes. So that's 
Obviously, to she's on my making list. To make the giant ones, they're so big that we haven't really got anywhere to store them. So that's Jane. This is the famous shelf that's waiting to go up that all the pictures for the index are taken on. So the shelf will be oh, going wow. back up in here shortly because they are taken real term on a shelf. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got giant Joanna. Basically, this is the giant bag <laughs> um, that won't fit in anywhere else. Classics like Aaron Winston that we never yeah. see. He was probably, he's probably a good. Is that a giant years head elf? Um, this is a giant nutcracker. Ah, oh, yeah. wow. This is a giant nutcracker in here. So obviously the giant dolls are absolutely huge. And this is not the giant giants. The actual massive ones have to be stored in the barn because they're so big. Yeah. Yeah. This is just the ones that are made in our chunky to the normal top standard. Santa's at the bottom of there too. But we can't keep them out, unfortunately, all year round. No. So we're going to have to find a different way of storing them. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> And this is where the magic happens. We've, we, we've seen this already, but we'll see it once again. Because, yeah. And it's great that you've got your shelves, everything can be personalised. Yeah, it is. Like, freshly installed and ready to do um, many more videos and digital teaching as we go through. So I've been like hunting for something like this for ages to yeah. actually have a, um, a solid backdrop. Amazing. I'm actually sitting in Kerry's chair at Kerry's desk the desk in the office. And I'm gonna spin you around. We're gonna do a die club a chat. Go. So we're doing the final checks over the postcards before they go out to the die club. So the process has been, I made the original in the die club. Then we tested that by making it in a second colorway. Then I recorded a video of all the step-by-steps um, to make sure that um, we had everything in the correct order and a final check on all of the pattern, putting it together. And then off the video, we've built the final graphics. So it's going through all the final stages with Rachel tech editing, all the graphics against the video and against the pattern to make sure we're ready to go tomorrow. And I'm not showing the pattern, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was really interesting that we've gone from Rachel's drawing through to an image that I'm not showing. But how it all materialises from literally hand like That's not going to show it. Is that all right? Yeah, that's I can fine. show that? Yeah. You can show that. Just yeah. checking. Yeah. <laughs> and we sent Rosie on a wild goose chase because <laughs> Kerry had the demo. Yeah, I had it all along, so. <laughs> I brought it in for Rachel to be able to check against the pattern. Yeah. Amazing. So we've done that bit and she doesn't want to speak. Shy. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> This is Rachel. People know you from the shows. But Rachel doesn't want to be on camera, really. But I've made her. Mean. <laughs> it is mean. I'm sorry. I'm here with another shy person who doesn't want to really be on camera, but I'm going to make her because... What's your name? Hi, I'm Liz the Dodo. Liz the Dodo. <laughs> and Liz is the mama. Oh, there he is again. Hello. This is baby Jay. Oh, baby Jay. We saw him earlier. And he's back. Oh, Big stretch. Big stretch. Big stretch. I said she had to be on camera. <laughs> okay, final thing before I wrap up my time at Toft. I am with... Hello. Who are you? Beth, I'm Beth. And nice what do you do? <laughs> um, lots of different things. Um, so lots of creative content, um, stories on social media, also doing like DMs and Facebook messages. Um, and artistic assistance for Kerry, or just things in general, like how we make everything look, um, photography, Yay. And styling, and I love ordering lots of props and things for all the different projects that we're doing, um, like a mini picnic set for the Queen's um, <laughs> you know, going online and finding all those bits and bobs. That was brilliant. It, yeah, as good as it can look. Let me spin the camera back around. Sorry, I'm just putting away some props that um, we had out for this morning's Pride launch. Pride. Yeah. So I've got um, a box here of lots of crochet demos all in there. I've got some labelled wool in this box, um, unlabeled wool in this bag and this bag. And then in here, I've tried to get everything as neat as I can um, <laughs> to um, yeah, make things as quick as possible. So I'm just going to unclip these. these so we're going to take them down, but usually do we use these yeah. flat lays then? And we... Yeah, so flat lays often we'll actually do on the floor. Um, oh, okay. The camera can be um, high up, obviously. Is that what you were shooting earlier? This one was um, <laughs> 3D, 3D lifestyle. So it would be the toy sat here and then some setup in the background and then the camera would be shooting this way. Uh -huh. And then if we wanted it to be 
flat lay, it'd be best to have a really low table or this on the floor. Yeah. And then camera on tripod. So you can see this one's got a little stick in there. Explain the stick. It's just some <laughs> of the Aran animals obviously have heavier heads. Yeah. Um, I normally get them to sit by themselves, but it's just if there's somebody else taking a picture, who's a little bit less confident with sitting them up. Yeah. Might need a bit of help with some extra. Yes, because we don't want to. Stitches. <laughs> but yeah it's all about finding the balance obviously smaller things sit up a lot easier but i think persistence is key yeah things like that you it's make gone. it look so easy because mine definitely <laughs> do not stay it's just practice upright like Lots that practice yeah and hands on um on feet hands on feet yeah, yeah. most important <laughs> so thank you that's all right so there we go. I'm just walking back up the dispatch to go and get all my stuff. And I had to quickly stop and show you this. Cause it's just like, what a place to work, right? I work in an office. Imagine working amongst all this greenery. It's just, <laughs> I have office envy, but there's, there's the original. HQ. So we're just going to walk back. And then I didn't do it this morning. I'll go through the door and I'll do you a quick indoor tour and show you what happens inside. I'm back, I'm at home now, and that's the end of the toft footage. Um, yeah, what a crazy day that was. I said right at the very beginning, I'm not sure how much footage I'm going to get. I was really worried in the back of my mind that I would get carried away seeing things and meeting people that I then get home and I've got like 20 minutes of footage. <laughs> so I know we're over an hour now, um, but I'm hoping that you've all enjoyed seeing behind the scenes of where all the magic happens. And for me, as a Toft super fan, I hope that I got to um, get all the good behind the scenes bits, how everything works, meet the lovely people that work at Toft. Um, and I hope that as super fans yourself watching these, uh, this video, that I got to capture something of interest for you um i kind of reflect back on the day and i still can't believe i went <laughs> um 
yeah, it was all a bit of a blur. It's, really, it's been really nice watching bits of the clips back that I've taken. Go, oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about I did that. Oh, I've forgotten about that. Um, but I think what made me, what, what stood out the most was how everything works together, but everything is done in Toft. And the quality and the commitment that everyone puts into everything that they do really just shone out in the day while I was there. But I think just then shines out as a fan and a customer that when I get things, they're so neatly put together and you can tell that care has been put into that. But that's kind of even more to the front of my mind now, having seen how it all works. Like we did the tour of the wool warehouse and all the balls come in individually and those labels are made by hand by a Toft member. So they make those labels up. And Carrie was saying that the labels now um, are, oh, I've got a ball by here actually. <laughs> These labels now come in like this, but previously the labels used to come in as a rectangle and the team would even have to cut the corners off. But for a team member to make that and then put that on the ball it's just, it, it's little things like that that just kind of reflects the quality of what you're getting, that this isn't mass produced, you know, done by machine. There's there's care and a pair of hands has touched that. Um, and as Kerry said, you know, five or six hands when it's in Toft to get it from um, raw product through to dispatch. It's just little things like that. And seeing um, Jess do the dye-in, um, and like, I can't even comprehend, like she just, just did those two schemes for the Kew Garden um, project, but I can't even imagine dying in twos or threes. They're like over 700 hand dyed schemes for dye club. And again, it's just those types of things that I'm sure you could mass produce that, but then I feel like you'd lose a bit of the heart of what it is. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was really interesting that everybody I spoke to put the same care and attention into it that I've come to expect as a customer, that I think that you've all come to expect as customers, and you can see how it all links together. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to kind of just sit down and just kind of my musings. <laughs> that was kind of my observation as I was driving home. Um, it's about three hours for me, and I was very, very lucky with the traffic. I didn't hit any traffic. Um, at all. So I had a really long day. I got home about eight o'clock. Um, a very little happy beer um, with my stickers. <laughs> I'm keeping the rest of those stickers unless I get invited back and then I can take my stickers and use the rest of them. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm just going to wrap this video up then. I said, I hope that there's been something in here that um, you've enjoyed seeing. And I know lots of you will be in different, uh, different clubs or enjoy different parts of the Toft experience. I hope that you've all um, got to see something um, that you liked behind the scenes. Um, I obviously have to just end this video by saying a huge thank you to the team at Toft because they were so welcoming. Everybody was happy to sit down and chat to me. There were a few other people that you've probably seen walking around in the background, but if I'd literally sat down and spoken to every single person, um, this video would probably be like two hours long. Um, I'm hoping I get to go back and do part two. Um, maybe, <laughs> who knows? But there's lots of other pe lots of other um, team members that I spoke to during the day, but I just didn't get a chance to um, sit down and, and chat to them in a bit more detail. But thank you to everybody for being so welcoming and sharing with me what they were working on and getting me involved in the process. And of course, the big thanks has to go to Kerry, um, who was super receptive when I made contact and said, can we do a collaboration? I'd love to come and film and we talked through some ideas um so a big thank you to kerry for letting me have this opportunity in the first place but also being super generous with um her time during the day you know as you've seen kerry is pivotal as are all the team members to keeping the business running and kerry was pretty much on hand whenever i had i had a question or i needed anything chaperoning me down to see the cute little career being born giving me the tour of the warehouse showing me um, where she gets to film. Um, so I uh, really appreciate Kerry taking the time out to spend so much time with me, um, which I think made this video 
even more special then because it feels like we've all had an insight into Kerry a bit more and the workings of Toft. So I'm going to end this video there. I'm going to edit all this footage together and then um, see where we get to and try and upload it to the YouTube. Um, I'm not sure when it's going to go live yet. Obviously, Die Club was in the video a lot. So I need to just wait for Die Club to officially land with everybody and all that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll chat to Kerry about when the video will go up. Um, I'm hoping it won't be too long because I don't think there were too many secrets that I saw that um, will stop this video going up earlier. So yeah, I'm going to leave this one there. Um, please let me know in the comments below what you think of this video, what you think of the things that you see. Was it what you expected? Was it different? Um, I'd love to know what you think. Um, and being part of this sort of Knit365 community, it's kind of Crochet 365 now as well, right? Um, but you know what I mean. Um, let me know what you think. Um, I'd be super interested to get chatting with you all about this video. So I'm going to leave this there. Lots more coming up um, later in the month, assuming this is up early to mid-June. By the end of June, maybe early July, I will do my Imaginist video. So for you Toft people, there will be another video coming. My Imaginist entry is currently balls of wool. I've not started, so I need to get cracking with that. So there'll be another Toft video coming towards the end of the month, and there's a knitting video coming mid-month as well, where I've finished a shawl to share with you all. So um, I hope that you are all well, and um, have a great month, and until we speak again, happy crafting!